All right. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome back for another edition of the Weekly Member Spotlight. I'm Amy Wilson, and today I get to sit down with Nathan Plants with Kira. Um, before we dive into his interview, just a couple reminders. Um, we have human trafficking awareness training coming up on August 17th. And CAPS courses start August 23rd with Rich George, so don't miss out on that. Um, and you can register for both at gcnkaa.org. All right, welcome, Nathan. Thank you so much hey. for sitting down with me today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Hey, yeah. Um, good to see you. I'm missing you a bit. Um, good to catch up. So you have uh, done a little bit of switch. Um, you are now with Kira. Yep. Um, so why don't you start off to tell us a little bit about how you got into the industry, where you come from, and how you landed with Kira and what you're doing now. Yeah, so uh, uh, like most uh, on these interviews and in the industry, uh, my my whole career has been in real estate and got, you know, seven plus uh, specifically in multifamily. Uh, started on site, you know, <laughs> you got to work your way up, right? right. Um, uh, I had the, what I would say, unfortunate pleasure of being a resident property manager uh, of about 150 units. Uh, everyone knows where you live. Uh, so, so it's not just Monday through Friday, eight to five, uh, as most of anyone's job in, in multifamily is anymore. So, um, you know, jump into the deep end. Uh, that was my experience right off the bat. And uh, yeah, you know, did everything from leasing to maintenance uh, sometimes and, you know, rewriting leases and moving people in and out. So it was right there in Loveland, actually, uh, here locally. So that's kind of where I got my start and slowly through the years have transitioned uh, over to the supplier side and worked for a couple uh, really nice kind of property technology firms. And now I find myself at Kira, which is a financial solutions, uh, specifically targeted in multifamily. So it's a really interesting product. It's the only of its kind in the industry in America. So it's really kind of uh, reimagining the way renting is, is taking place. So what exactly does Secure do? You said it's the only one. Yeah, so it's a way for yeah. it's it's a, it's a way for everyone to really offload the financial stress uh, from resident to property manager to regional to CEO and asset owner. There's a lot of time, energy, and stress caused by every single financial interaction, whether it's good, bad, or otherwise. It's not convenient and easy, and it doesn't incentivize both parties typically. Um, so we've really created tools and solutions to handle everything from application deposit all the way to the end of lease and settlement and, you know, hopefully no soft collections, but, you know, at the end of the day, that as well. So and everything in between. So processing, flex rent, deposits and alternatives. Um, we're the only ones that can do it all because we do it with our own money. Um, so it's really nice. We kind of put our money where our mouth is. And uh, yeah, we create a lot of longstanding partners that way. Awesome. All right. So how did you get into property management? I started as a manager. Did you just kind of fall into it? Did you know? Uh, I had been in real history? estate for a while and just through mutual connections within the real estate, more residential side. So I've been, you know, licensed agent and uh, did some wholesaling and stuff as the economy was thinking in 2008 and nine. Um, so yeah, I got introduced to some, like an independent owner uh, in Loveland and they were needing some help, right? And I was like, well, hey, um, give me a place to live and, and I'll, I'll come on over. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so we worked out an agreement and I was kind of, so I kind of just fell into it. And, uh, but it was in my niche market and uh, I always wanted to live in Loveland. It was right there next to the bike trail, you know, so you can't complain about location. Nope. And uh, yeah, that's how I got into it and uh, just slowly transitioned, you know, upwards into that and then moved over to supplier. Awesome. What, since you've been in the industry for a while, what would you say is your favorite or most memorable story in property management, either on-site yeah. or supplier side? So, so I'll share one of my on-sites is uh, a resident meant to reverse and went forward through a parking lot, up over median, sideswiping vehicles. Mind you, it's very early in the morning. Um, thankfully, it wasn't too busy out. And uh, you, everyone's seen these buildings, especially in the Midwest, where there's a sub-basement unit, you know, that has the walkout. And basically half of her car ended, impaled in through the building into someone's like kitchen and living room. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. 
but it was definitely a Monday morning. And like Monday mornings ever since then, like have never been that bad. So like everyone else is complaining about Monday mornings. And I'm like, well, at least it's not like that. Right. right? So every year on Facebook, my memory pops up, like, how was your Monday? You know, so <laughs> um, it, it's a funny one to always relive. It, it was frightful, obviously, for everyone that was involved. But thankfully, like I said, no one was hurt. Uh, but it was it's one of those that uh, you're never going to forget. Right. Yeah. No, at least no one was hurt. That's I'm sure that was a headache. Yeah. Structural and, engineers, you know, the whole, oh, yeah, the whole the city of Loveland is out there, you know. Oh, yeah. Factors, Everybody's got to come check it out. Yeah. News crews, okay. probably. I, I can't remember. <laughs> um. So what uh, any advice that you would give to anyone coming into the industry or wanting to get into the industry? What would you what would you say to them? Yeah, I mean, I would say really kind of be. I wish I kind of like, this is my uh, older self talking to my younger self, right? Uh, but be a little bit more courageous in your career aspirations and not only internally, but making them known to your employer, boss, colleagues, uh, and, and kind of having more, you know, good book read, radical candor uh, to, to, to really make sure that all of your values and timeframes are at least known and hopefully in alignment. Um, I think it's going to help a lot of people early in their careers, especially even within multifamily, not to to let those be hindered just by the humdrum of every day. Yeah, that's great advice for anyone. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so let's switch gears a bit, get to know you on a more personal level. All right. Um, you want to tell us about your family? Yeah, so I'm a husband and father. Got a little man that just turned four actually a couple weeks ago and uh, a cat. And uh, yeah, you know, we, we actually live uh, over in Brookville, Indiana, you know, near the lake, uh, just stone's throw from, from our property. So uh, yeah, we moved out here about three years ago. And yeah, it was a nice little uh, retreat over COVID time uh, to be away from the city and everything and still just a short drive away. Nice. Very nice. Sounds peaceful. I'm out in the country a little bit yeah, myself. Yeah. I like the quiet. So nice and quiet. Yeah. Um, are you a book reader? Any good books you like to share? I'm more of an audible person. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't read much, uh, but I do. Uh, I even find myself, since I no longer commute to work and I work right here in Brookville at, a, at another office, is, uh, yeah, I, I find myself even kind of taking a long way to work and, and listen to a book or I'll listen to it while I'm working throughout the day. So more of an audible person. Okay. Any favorites you'd like to share? Uh, well, Radical Candor is always a good one to start okay. with. Um, that, that's a, a really good one uh, kind of on that subject of uh, Radical Candor. Okay. Um, another one I just read may or may not be appropriate for all readers, but it was uh, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F Word. Um, but yeah, it's like a, a counterintuitive approach to living the good life, he says. And uh, yeah, no, I literally just finished that one yesterday. And uh, yeah, it just helps you kind of like reprioritize, flip, flip the script, get outside the box, think about things differently, um, because there's only so many things you can really prioritize or care about wholeheartedly in life. And, and so much messaging out there right now is you have to care about everything. Right. Um, and you only get marketed and messaging of like everything that's going on good. Like, oh, I'm so perfect. I'm Instagram this. It's like, no, like that's your best self. And, and not everyone can live up to those standards. So let's just be real. Right. Um, and, and, and so I found both of those. Uh, I picked up Radical Candor again, like three months ago and have read that one, you know, listened to it probably three or four times. Uh, but yeah, that, that one was a new one. So. And I, um, I have also read the, um, the book you just mentioned. <laughs> so I, I agree. It's a very good read or listen, um, whatever your are yeah. so. You just have to be I, comfortable with a little profanity. But right. other than that, we're in property management. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <We know>. Sales. <laughs> right. <laughs> so awesome. All right. What about podcasts? You like to listen to some podcasts? Yeah. Yeah. No, I've actually got uh, a couple really good ones that I like specifically in multifamily uh, that I picked up just through like LinkedIn and connections. Um, but one is called uh, Modern Multifamily, and both of these are pretty cool because they're interview style, much like today is, right? Oh, nice. Um, 
And so you get a lot of different guests and, and appearances. So one is uh, Modern Multifamily with Mike Wolber over at, uh, I think it's Rent Dynamics that he's at. And uh, the other one uh, is, quote unquote, the uh, most curious person in multifamily, a.k.a. Uh, Moshe Crane. And uh, yeah, he's got a podcast out called The uh, Curious Wire. And he's got like 16 or 17 episodes out. I know Modern Multifamily's probably got like 50 episodes out. So, I mean, tons of interviews, tons of insight from VPs to CEOs to, you know, uh, you know, property management companies to tech providers. Uh, it's a really good hodgepodge of all these different guests. And uh, yeah, just getting their insights on like trends and um, yeah, some really poignant conversations. I think yeah. even... I'm not even sure. Maybe Kate was Katie Kane on one. Maybe I don't remember. I have no idea, but I will check those out. I'm always looking for podcast recommendations. Mm -hmm. So, um, my podcast is more um, my library is more like just for fun, pleasure. I haven't really gotten into it for like the multifamily, which I need to. Obviously, it's what we do, right? So, but mine's more like true crime and. Maybe. That's where most of mine were too. <laughs> yeah. True crime definitely ate up a lot of my 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 podcast time. Yeah, yeah. So that's great. Those are two multifamily good ones. There we go. <laughs> Keep it on the professional side. What do you like to do outside of work? Yeah, so I mean, I like Brookville, obviously. So half the reason we moved out here is just, you know, being on the water, whether it's a kayak or out on the lake and uh, yeah, so a lot of hiking and biking and trails. So, I mean, I was literally up at uh, Lake Michigan in the Indiana State Dunes. I didn't know there was dunes in the Midwest, but I mean, obviously, once you get up around the lakes, there are. Um, so it was up there, uh, Hoosier National Forest, but, you know, still all the good ones in Ohio, <laughs> just because I live over here, I forgot about them, or, you know, uh, Kentucky has a lot to offer, too, so we're we're out and about every weekend as a family, kind of just seeing nature. Awesome. What about sports? You big sports? Yeah, so obviously, I love my fantasy football team, <laughs> but uh, no, no, uh, uh, I grew up in southeastern Ohio. Uh, actually, the last time Joe Burrow lost in high school was against us. But uh, big Bengals fan <laughs> and uh, big Joe Burrow supporter. He, he's absolutely amazing. Um, go pay Core Stadium, uh, right? <laughs> right? Right. Uh, or like I, I was petitioning for Burrow's Burrow, uh, but it just... <laughs> They didn't hear me out on it. No. Um, but uh, yeah, no, big Bengals fan, because obviously, you know, I love Cincinnati. I love love the city. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of heartaches, ups and downs with all things Reds and Bengals and even FC related. So, right. uh, you know, but yeah, I've always supported them. But oddly enough, I did grow up a bit of a Minnesota Vikings fan back in the, uh, you know, 80s and 90s. Uh, I was big kind of Chris Carter guy, Randy Moss went to Marshall, which wasn't too far from where I was at. So I followed his career and then he was obviously a Viking as well. So yeah, uh, outside of the Bengals, uh, I was a big kind of Vikings fan too. All right. Let's see. What about the best vacation? So many taken. different types of vacations, right? It's like, well, what's your best beach and ski and, you know, right? what that, about you know like, cause I can this... say them all, but I would say most memorable all time. And it, it really just comes back to uh, the amount of time too, right? Like, right. And the time of your life. So why not? Yeah, me and all my buddies, we graduated college, we grabbed backpacks and flew to Europe for, you know, uh, quite a while. So we, we landed in London, we flew out of Paris and went backwards through you know like Denmark, Holland, Germany, down into Switzerland, which is if I had to pick one place, that's it, right? Like Switzerland, and then flew back out at Italy. So um Switzerland, if I had to pick a place and a location, uh, it was uh oh, yeah. Interlaken, uh Switzerland. What was your favorite part of Switzerland? <sighs> just the mountains. I mean just the the the, the scenery. I mean it's just yeah. the, the landscape is unmatched it just it, it's so magnificent and huge and I mean we're there in summer and you could go skiing at the top of a mountain you know and we're swimming in the lake below now granted the, the lake's going to be a little cold it's a little chilly it's, it's glacial melt um so yeah but it just it, it's just something you 
you think is almost out of this world. Awesome. 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 Well, how about uh, anything else you'd like to share with all the viewers before we wrap up? Uh, go get them. Happy Friday. <laughs> you know, uh, say hello a little bit more to us suppliers. We, we, we don't bite. I, I promise I'll buy lunch even. Um, Amy knows True. this. I've even I taken her out uh, to yeah. lunch a couple times. So yeah, no, uh, yeah, let's, uh, we're all in it to, to, for the same reasons. And uh, a lot of us come from both sides, you know, and have a good mixture of an understanding. And uh, at the end of the day, there's just not enough inventory. And it's kind of like one of the struggles in, in the industry is we can't build them fast enough and we can't make them affordable enough. So uh, I think there's, everyone has their heart in the right place. And uh, yeah, let's just, the more conversations we can have around how we can help energize that, that movement of, you know, affordable housing um, it, it is really, I think, the wave of the future for the industry because we can't continue raising rent prices <laughs> with inflation and a lack of supply and everything. So um there's both suppliers and, and and property managers and asset owners all trying to work to say, you know, work to solve the same problems. Right. Very well said. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure catching up with you. And to everyone at DCNKA, have a happy Friday and a wonderful weekend.